I've played every Final Fantasy since 6 or 4 or International, the, the one with Kefka, and I've loved every one of them except 12, which I only really dislike because Vaughn and Pinello are such annoying characters that I just couldn't enjoy myself. I even liked the hallway simulator of Final Fantasy 13, and that game had Vanille, who was just... Ugh. Uh, uh, <sighs> man. Uh, so, like many, I was initially not super excited about Final Fantasy 16. It was a massive shift in the genre, barely calling itself an RPG anymore. Now, still, being a fan of Final Fantasy XIV, the MMO, I trusted Yoshi P, the producer, to make something great. After the incredible demo, I was suddenly extremely excited to play it. As a side note, the Final Fantasy XVI demo may be the best game demo ever made. Seriously, it made me go from not planning to buy it to immediately pre-ordering it. That shit was incredible. And before I go further, let me be clear on my overall stance on XVI. I liked it. I liked it a lot, actually. I wouldn't quite say I loved it, but it was a solid 8 out of 10 game for me. Now, when comparing Final Fantasy games, we're comparing media of extremely high quality. Even the worst Dark Souls game, for example, is still considered a great game. And the same is true for Final Fantasy except for 10 2 which is a sin against mankind and doesn't exist. More so than most Final Fantasy games, 16 also has a lot of problems. The thing is, it also has so many utterly jaw-dropping moments that the problems very clearly get offset most of the time. It's only near the game's final act do the jaw-dropping moments kind of stop, and all that's left is the pretty glaring flaws of the game overall. From this point onwards, I will be talking about spoilers, as I can't really critique anything in the game without talking about story elements and overall game flow. Again, spoilers ahead from here. So, let's start with the story. 16 starts off, like I said earlier, in an absolutely incredible way. It may have the best opening of any Final Fantasy in the series' history. The atmosphere, the characters, the incredible voice acting, the overall mature theme, all incredible points that draw in the player immediately. And honestly, the momentum carries through for quite a bit. There are a few lulls here and there in a couple of groan-worthy areas that are clearly meant to be just filler to break up for the incredible icon fights, but overall the story carries itself pretty well, that is, until like the last 10% of the game. The ending of 16 is, in my opinion, pretty bad. The game's story undoubtedly peaks at the whole Bahamut section, and sort of just peters out afterwards. Never really outright fails, but there's very little excitement around the end. Barnabas, the whole dominant of Odin, the whole Walud section, it's just criminally underused, and the entire section just feels like an afterthought. Now the main villain of the game, Ultima, starts off pretty promising. He speaks in like this very alien, almost G-Man-like cadence, and his enigmatic nature left me kind of interested in what his overall goals were. But in classic Final Fantasy style, it just boils down to he wants to destroy humanity and be a god, and you know, you have to kill God, as it usually goes. For a story that was touted to be kind of different from the other Final Fantasies, it was kind of a shame to see it just end up being, you know, the same thing. Now, the human and political component to the story was its strongest aspect, and it's almost entirely abandoned by the end. In fact, the entire last section of the game on the other continent reminds me of the train wreck that is the end sections of Final Fantasy XV, just like a giant railroaded land section with almost nothing going on inside of it, despite being basically half of the game's visible planet. The actual ending of the game itself is also kind of bad. There's absolutely no reason to leave Clive's fate ambiguous. Catharsis is a great thing in storytelling. Seeing a character that was built up as not having to sacrifice himself while surrounded by his friends appear to sacrifice himself just makes no sense. In 15, for example, the sacrifice was kind of hinted at for Noctis pretty much the entire game. It sort of just comes out of nowhere in 16. Also, a nearly criminal offense is that if you do some random side quest, the ambiguity of Clive's fate is far less muddy. Side quests should never, ever be required to understand an ending. Now, they can be used to add special details for your efforts, but something like Jill's side quest near the end should not have been optional whatsoever, while terrible sections like that one desert town with the bandit problem that was so unremarkable, I don't even remember the name of it, like Dalamil or something, I think that stuff should have been optional. Now, the very final scene of humanity having to rely on themselves instead of magic is a kind of a nice touch, and I thought that was cool, but I wish we had closure for our characters of the story, not just random villagers sometime in the future. Now, as a branch off of the story, let's talk about characters. Now, the main cast is mostly really likable. Clive is a solid, somewhat generic protagonist who is brilliantly voice acted. Sid is fantastic, Gav is great, Torgal is best dog, Dion is one of the coolest dragoons in the series, Benedicta goes from making you hate her to kind of feeling bad for her, 
and Clive's mother is that insane psycho bitch that you love to hate, kind of like Cersei. On the flip side, there are so many throwaway characters in four sections that feel like side missions that I can't even remember their names. Additionally, Jill is criminally underused in almost the entire game. She's got one really good section where she gets her revenge, and she has one nice moment with Clive later. That's basically all she does the entire game. I legitimately cringe when she just sort of gets captured by Hugo at one point, as if she isn't extremely powerful herself. Yeah, sure, Hugo is too, but the beginning of the game, like the very beginning, shows those two fighting with no real victor in sight. She even accompanies Clive very often and then just sort of sits there in the background or just offers very minor input. She's a cool character and it's kind of a shame they underutilize her so much. Also, just random side note, can we get more representation with characters like Dion? I know I don't really have a leg in that race, but I absolutely hate the way that like companies like Blizzard do it, where they have a style of including gay people to meet some weird ass like diversity quota paradigm. The highest compliment I can give Dion about being an awesome gay character is I would never refer to him normally as a gay character. He's just a cool ass character that happens to be gay. He's not defined by the fact that he's gay. He's defined by the awesome things he does in the story. That is the way to do it. Dion is awesome. Overall though, I think the characters of the game are one of its strongest points, made even more impactful by the extremely good voice acting. Seriously, Ben Starr as Clive is absolutely nuts. Now, the actual gameplay. The gameplay is an extremely mixed bag for me. You go from absurdly high highs to extremely low lows. The game flow reminds me a lot of Final Fantasy XIV, which gets sort of an excuse because it's an MMO. Now in that game, you typically have some big event like a dungeon or trial, followed by a lot of uninteresting stuff for hours, and then followed by more super height stuff. Now I think in an MMO, that's more understandable, but for a single player game, I think those kind of filler quests are not really acceptable anymore. Now, the highs in this game, like I said, are really high, like sky high. My jaw legitimately dropped in several encounters in the game, all almost like exclusively tied to the icon battles. Some of them are so over the top and ridiculous, you can't do anything but laugh and smile at the fact that you are a fiery beast who is fused with your brother, attacking a dragon who ate a crystal who went insane. Also, you're in space. Like, there's so much ridiculous shit that happens in this game. It's almost like a drug you want the next hit of which lets you power through the game's more boring content in hopes of reaching that next insane battle. Now, as for the gameplay itself, I found it initially super interesting, but it quickly became clear the game, it's just too easy. I understand wanting everyone to be able to beat the game and experience all, that I truly do get that accessibility, but I don't think I got a single game over the entire game. I can't say that about any other Final Fantasy. I got a game over at least one time in pretty much every other Final Fantasy, Hell, in 14, you wipe on new content pretty frequently. I can't even imagine how easy the game is with those accessibility rings that essentially play the game for you. Now, to be clear, games don't have to be hard to be fun. Dark Souls has kind of ruined that for a lot of games nowadays, where if they're not Dark Souls level of difficulty, they just sort of get mocked for whatever reason. Games like Tears of the Kingdom and hell, Final Fantasy 16 itself show you that you don't really need a hard game for it to be fun. Sometimes you just need to feel like a cool badass hero, and that's enough. Sometimes the power fantasy of just being a god-slaying beast is enough, and that's okay. Still, the fact that we couldn't choose the difficulty of New Game Plus from the start was a terrible design choice in my opinion. Even the highest end S-tier hunts only had the consequence of making me like have to actually use my potions for once. Eventually it got to a point where I just stopped doing side quests because they were at least, you know, at the start of the game, very MMO-like and boring, but also I didn't really need any extra rewards to help me beat the game. In most Final Fantasies, there's some grueling quest to get your character's ultimate weapon, and it feels kind of great to get, but this game is so easy, I honestly felt it was just pointless to even find how to get Clives. There's no, like, super bosses, at least that I know of, like Emerald Weapon or Ruby Weapon or any of those fights. All of the S-tier hunts were at least more difficult than most of the game's regular content, but again, I never got a game over even doing the absolute highest end ones. Now, the low difficulty also stifled innovative gameplay for me. Why practice combos into air stomps, into combo resets, into iconic abilities, into whatever else, but I can pretty much just button mash, occasionally hit a magic burst timing, and, you know, beat everything on my first try. Now, the RPG mechanics of the game may as well not even exist. I don't even think the developers claim the game is an RPG. The stats are utterly meaningless, and the level up screen might as well just say, you got a little bit stronger, yay! Gone are status ailments, elemental weaknesses, and all the 
tropes that kind of make a Final Fantasy game a Final Fantasy game. I genuinely hated the fact that I would use Ifrit's abilities against a classic bomb enemy, and it would just do full damage, Ifrit being fire and bombs notoriously absorb fire. You know, just stuff like that. Gear is extremely boring. More often than not, it's just a yellow number go slightly up method of finding new armor of weapons. The game also gives you items to craft weapons at key points in the story that are usually your best weapons at the time that you get them, so you're not even really choosing anything anymore. You're just getting slight upgrades every time there's a major story event. The only customization you actually have is choosing which abilities to unlock and equip, which can be fun, don't get me wrong. But I would have loved to see basically any other RPG elements in the game. Also, I absolutely hate the scattering of random items on the ground everywhere. They're just literally shiny pebbles that are just always potions or useless crafting gear you have 800 of but never use. Sometimes the item drops are, no joke, 2 gil. If you're unfamiliar with Final Fantasy Currency, 2 gil is basically a penny. Why even put that there? The answer is to give you the illusion you're collecting things like an RPG, but in reality you're just collecting, you know, candy wrappers. To summarize, itemization in Final Fantasy 16 is utterly terrible. It's even worse than a lot of action games. Now, side quests are pretty bad. The sad part is, some of the side quests are actually really, really good, but the game trains you into thinking they're all going to be these boring MMO-style fetch quests based on the first, like, 15 that you do, that you just start to ignore them, and the ones at endgame are really good, but by the time you get there, I had no interest in doing them anymore. This makes you skip over incredibly well-designed quests like I did. The fact that I had to watch Jill's side quest on YouTube because I didn't even know it existed made me pretty mad because of its impact on understanding the ending of the game. Still, most side quests are essentially just go to place, kill thing, bring back to hideout. They're just not interesting at all. The game would be better if they just did not exist in my opinion. Considering this is not an MMO, it's a single player game. That being said, some people do love their side quests and completionism, so this is more of a personal nitpick than an objective critique there. Now what does the gameplay do right? It's the spectacle of it. This game is an absolute blast to watch people play, as half of it is legitimately just like a movie. And I mean that literally, with like, the amount of quick time events in this game is basically a movie a lot of the time. Still, the fights are so insane that you just kind of ignore the somewhat shallow gameplay loop. I absolutely loved the Nier Automata style of just complete gameplay shifts where you're fighting as Clive as one point, and you're fighting as Ifrit as one point, and then you're fighting Titan as Ifrit, and you fight a giant mountain version of Titan that shifts the gameplay into Temporon or Sonic, then there's a shooter in one section of it, then you're doing a God of War Krona style fight, then a Gandalf versus Balrog style fight. This is all the same encounter, by the way. I love that the game was not afraid to go completely over the top in order to generate extremely epic moments. Now, I do think it leans slightly too far into camp. Oh god, that one line at the end where he basically goes, Hey, it's me, John Final Fantasy. I just... Ugh. But overall, it was so ridiculous, I just couldn't help but smile through most of it. The sheer spectacle of all of it was one of Final Fantasy's greatest strengths. And in 16, they do that very, very well. The music also adds to the strength to an extremely high level. Soken has only gotten better over time, and there are more than a handful of absolute bangers in this game's soundtrack that sit up there with some of the best the series has to offer. I do think they reuse some tracks a little too much, but honestly, the tracks are so good, I don't mind hearing them more than once, so it's some pretty good stuff. Overall, the game's weak ending is probably why I would give this game like an 8 out of 10. I sometimes wonder it would be better if the bad ending were traded with the absolutely stellar beginning. Without that beginning, though, I might not have even purchased the game because the demo was so enticing. Still, I think nailing the ending is one of the most important aspects of retaining a game in your memory as something that you enjoyed, which is why even after enjoying the entire game quite a bit, I find 16 to, uh, to be, like, overall, one of the least memorable Final Fantasy games. Again, the least memorable Final Fantasy is still a high pedestal to beat. It's a higher pedestal than most games overall out there today, but I did want to rant about some of the disappointments I did have with the game. Like I said, overall, I enjoyed the game. It's really fun to watch people play. I had a blast playing it. I just wish they didn't kind of shove a lot of the weaker points into the game. I wish they kind of handled the ending way, way better. I wish there were more RPG elements, and I wish the gameplay itself was a bit more deeper or had the difficulty to require a bit deeper gameplay. Overall, though, still a very good game. In terms of Final Fantasies, I consider it a bit on the lower side, but again, we're comparing diamonds here. It's still pretty damn good.